What is up everybody? Um, today what we're going to do is show you as beginner fly tires how to tie your first fly. Um, hopefully this fly will catch you lots of trout. We're going to tie the damselfly nymph. Right, so hi there. Um, today we're going to talk about the damselfly nymph. If you've never tied a fly before, it's a really good one to try. Because um, you can basically make quite a lot of these quite quick. Uh, and you only need really basic fly tying materials and equipment. So for this, you'll need some marabou. You'll need some hooks. So what I've got here is a long shank lure hook here. Um, you'll need some tying thread. A pair of scissors little bit of wire and of course a whip finish tool. So basically the damselfly is a lure. Um, it roughly sort of loosely simulates a natural pattern of a damselfly in the nymph stage of its life cycle. Um, so what you've got going to do here is, is it's an approximation really. Um, it looks just enough like a damselfly nymph to, to, to basically um, provoke a reaction. So what we'll do is we'll tie on our tying thread. You need quite a large hook for this. So the one I've got today is a size eight uh, long shank hook. Size 10 long shanks also good for this pattern. Um, I'm just tidying up some of the hooks that I've got from emptying my fly box really. Um, you can strip them back if they're getting a bit tatty and use them again for new patterns. Um, if you have not seen my other video on, on sorting out your fly box, take a look at my, my channel and you can have a look and find some more. Um, so this is Vineyard's uh, Marabou here, Turkey Marabou. Um, first thing we're going to do, brand new packet here. Uh -huh. Get a couple of similar plumes out. There's one. probably more alike right forget how long these are because what you need is the actual tip we'll go for this this one here and then what we're going to do is just take that up and you want to make sure it's a similar length so that all the ends meet up at the same point don't put too much on in one go so what we can do is I'm going to just cut this quill and then we'll just do this, draw it up where we've got the ends the right length. So we're going to go from about here. Right, so if we have a look at our fly, we need to measure so it's roughly the same length as our body. doesn't matter if it's a little bit longer, so I'm going to take a few more of these fibres out. There we go. There we are, it's a little bit longer, but that'll do nicely. So, I'm going to basically start tying in with a one pinch wrap and then a couple of locking turns there, like that. So, we've stacked one, take the other end, plume of our marabou, same thing, just measure up so that they are same length so we'll go for that and stack this one up on top of the other one what this will do is it'll make sure that you've got just enough of this wispy material for it to move um, and also build that bulk that you want without it stopping you from getting a really good solid tie in. So again, just do that again. Pinch wrap, then a locking turn. And there's our tail tied in. So I'm going to use what's here as our underbody. Because what I don't like is if you cut it off there you end up with a bit of a bump. So tying the tail in is obviously the first stage. 
really easy, really straightforward. Uh, some of this mess out of the way. What we're going to do with the next stage is take another marabou plume and we're going to make our body material. Um, but before that I've just remembered we need to tie some wire in to make the uh, to, for our rib material. So just helicopter that till it snaps. And then what we'll do is just pinch wrap that in, fold it back on itself, and then we work our thread back down to the tail. If you've never tied a fly before, these are a really good one to start with, they're quite good fun. But you can soon get into a rhythm of doing a few of them at the same time. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our quill probably about there. Pinch it off, and we'll tie it in with the tips first. So just wet your fingers. Just wet them fingers again. And bring that back like that. And then what we'll do is we'll tie the tip end. So this is the quill end, the fat end of the feather. And we'll just pull and pinch wrap a couple of turns just to lock that in place. And tie it down to the two hour feathers. What I'm going to do is form our body with this so I'm just going to give it a little twist just to catch all the fibres together into one place and then what I'm going to do is work this back up to our head end so now that's tied in what you need to do I'll just go once or twice behind it and then I'll work a thread back up to the head end of the fly. We're going to use this to form the body of the fly. So I'll give this a bit of a twist just to, to bring the fibres together into a almost like a yarn, a bit like dubbing, which we'll cover in another video. And then we'll do even touching turns with this working our way back up to the head if you've got longer ones don't worry because you can do this lot just trim them out up to the top to go two or three times around and that we'll just leave there for now because we are going to form a bit of a wing with it later uh, but the next stage is to do the counter wraps with the wire so we've got a good long length of wire here probably way more than we'll need so what I'm going to do is bring this nice and even turned turning the opposite way round to the way that you tied the marabou and what this will do is this will make the, the marabou dressing that you put on nice and strong and finish just behind where you've ended up with your tying thread and do another wrap round there like that then you can helicopter this off it'll snap under its own sort of it'll snap on its own if you just spin it and eventually the bonds will break right so what I'm going to do is just form a little bit of a head there pulling those fibres back and wrapping round so this will create a bit of a wing, as they call it. So I'm just going to pinch with my right hand here. And tear some of these fibres back. And that will give us our 
wing to the fly. Now, as a little finishing touch, this is optional, is you can tie in a pair of eyes. Now you can buy these, um, if I put this, i just pinch this between the head of my pair of scissors. Now you can buy these, um, or you can make your own. Now this particular pair of eyes is made out of strimmer cord. Um, so if you've got a garden strimmer at home, or a weed whacker, I think you call them in the States, you can cut a small length of the plastic um, sort of cutting material that is used to, that actually cuts the grass for you. Um, cut a small section of that off, then get a lighter or a match, um, nipping in the centre of the piece, with a bit where I've got my scissors there, um, and then melt either end, and then just press down on your bench, it'll form this sort of eyes. As I say, you don't have to do that. You can use metal beaded options for this. You can also buy them ready-made for you. Um, I like this because it's quick, cheap, and convenient. Um, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'll just figure of eight that in. just in front of where I've got that wing material. So going back and forth, figure of eight. Reminds me of being in Scouts when I was a kid, lashing things together. Essentially that's what you're doing here. Figure of eight across the, the back of the, the uh, eyes. And then what I'll do is I'll build up my tie and thread behind just to make everything look nice and neat. Now these two do take a bit of a hammer from the trout when they take, take these. Um, so you just need to make sure that everything's nicely bound into place. And that's our fly finished there. So what we're gonna do now is a whip finish. You'll have probably all seen these before, or heard them talked about before. Um, just get your whip finish tool And I'm going to do this just behind those eyes, once around, twice around, three times around. And then I'll take the loop out, pull tight. Second time we're doing this, we're going to put a little bit of varnish on there, on the thread. And this will just help glue everything in place. Once. Once. Twice. Three times. Loop through. And pull tight. Make sure that's nice and snug. And enter in with our pair of scissors. I'm just going to apply a little bit more varnish. And this will soak nicely into that tying thread and harden everything off nicely. So that's our damsel nymph. You'll find them a great pattern to fish on still waters, um, rivers, anywhere really where trout are found. No great easy pattern to learn to tie if you're completely new to the hobby. Um, they fish really well. Easy to cast, um, easy to retrieve. You'll have a lot of fun with them. If you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed what you've seen today, please consider subscribing and hit that bell. Um, you'll get a new notification every time a video drops. Um, and there's a whole load of exciting videos on my channel. You just need to go and have a look. There's fishing adventures, there's fly time videos, all sorts of things. Um, so, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.